All of us want to build muscle, but many people don't even know where to start. There is way more that goes into building muscle than just lifting weights. And in this video, I'm going to go over 10 important concepts and tips that when integrated into your training routine will help build muscle in no time. Now, without wasting any time, let's jump into the first tip, which is to incorporate resistance training. Now, this should be self-explanatory, but I cannot stress this point enough. If you wanna grow muscle, you cannot skip resistance training. A 2019 systematic review stated the following. In summary, foundations for individuals seeking to maximize muscle growth should be hypertrophy-oriented resistance training consisting of multiple sets, three to six, of six to 12 repetitions with short rest intervals of approximately 60 seconds at a moderate intensity of effort, which is 60 to 80% of your one rep max. A systematic review is the gold standard when it comes to research, as they compile all the recent research and put it into one article, and this gives the best recommendations possible on a specific topic. So what's the takeaway of this point? You need to perform resistance training exercises if you wanna build muscle. And my biggest recommendation for you if you're just starting out is to drag yourself to the gym no matter how hard it is. Obviously, form is extremely important along with the other tips I'm gonna cover in this video, but the most important thing you can do is get in the gym. And once you develop a consistent routine and your general knowledge for weightlifting slowly increases, then you can start implementing more complex concepts. And now let's jump to tip number two, which is to focus on eccentric bias training. Before I explain why this is beneficial for muscle growth, let's discuss what an eccentric contraction actually is, and we're going to use a bicep curl to explain this concept. There are two phases to a traditional exercise, a concentric phase, which is contracting the muscle as it shortens, and this is the way up on a bicep curl. And then there's the eccentric phase, which is contracting the muscle as it lengthens, and this would be the way down on a bicep curl. A 2023 research article compared the concentric and eccentric contraction during hamstring exercises and analyzed the results. They found that eccentric training induced greater and significant changes in the neural and muscular profiles of the hamstring muscles compared to concentric training. This can be applied to every muscle group that you train and whatever exercise you perform, such as pull-ups, bench press, or bicep curls like the example. Now my personal goal when I'm lifting is to aim for a two to three second descent or that eccentric phase. And when you incorporate this, it also improves the third tip of this video, which is to increase your time under tension. Time under tension refers to the time your muscle is under contraction while you're doing a training set. A study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research revealed that extended time under tension increases the recruitment of both type one and type two muscle fibers. Basically, this recruitment stimulates hypertrophy across a broader range of muscle fiber types, maximizing your muscle growth potential. So if you prolong your eccentric phase like we just discussed, you're also gonna improve your time under tension, which is gonna kill two birds with one stone. Now, what's the ideal time under tension? According to a 2021 research article, it's suggested to aim for 40 to 70 seconds of time under tension for each set. So if you're performing sets of 10 reps, you're gonna need to contract your muscle for a total of four seconds on the way up and the way down to meet that range. Implement this and it's gonna make a huge difference in the muscle growth you see. Jumping to tip number four, we're gonna talk about increasing our protein intake. Protein is essential for building muscle, and this is an area where many are struggling in their diets. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm not a nutritionist, but I wanna go over some general recommendations on how much protein we should consume and some strategies that you can implement to hit that number. According to a 2022 systematic review, they found that a higher daily protein intake of 1.2 to 1.6 grams per kilogram of your body weight has been suggested to improve lean body mass gain or maintain muscle mass in young and old healthy adults. So for example, if you weigh 100 kilograms, you should be aiming to consume around 120 to 160 grams of protein per day. And I know this sounds like a lot, but if you consume high protein foods such as lean meats, it's gonna make hitting this number so much easier. Similarly, adding protein powder is a great option if you find yourself struggling to reach this mark. You need protein if you wanna build muscle, so you can't afford to lack in this area. And jumping into tip number five, we wanna train through our full range of motion. This honestly is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to the fitness industry, because I see many people performing partial range of motion during their exercises. Now I will say that there are legitimate reasons that people won't perform full range of motion, such as severe arthritis, injuries, and other comorbidities. However, if you're a healthy adult, you need to be training through the full range of motion you have available to maximize the gains that you can see. There are many times you'll see people ego lifting at the gym, and if your reps look anything like this, you need to throw your ego out the window, lower the weight, and focus on form. This will enable you to improve the range of motion you get during specific exercises, and in turn will lead to more stress and tension placed on the muscle, which leads to more muscle growth. 
Now, before we jump into the remaining tips, if you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more fitness videos just like this. And for tip number six, we're gonna talk about prioritizing free weights over machines. When you prioritize free weight exercises such as dumbbells or kettlebells, you will be required to contract more muscles that provide stability, and the huge one is your core. A 2023 article found that there is no difference between free weight or machine-based strength training induced changes when measured in the same exercise modality that they're training. Now I know you're thinking, if this is the case, then why am I prioritizing free weights over machines? However, there are several other benefits that we get from free weights that make it much more desirable than machines. Free weights are not only more versatile, but they also work more muscle groups, including smaller stabilizing muscles, and improve your overall strength. Now something that's really shocking to me, and it's probably gonna be shocking to you as well, is that there's actually more injuries associated with machines than free weights. Now I think this is likely due to people having an altered sense of confidence on machines, so they choose a weight that's heavier than their muscles can manage, and this leads to an acute injury. Now, I just wanna preface that I'm not saying machines are bad in any sense of the imagination. My suggestion would be to try and prioritize the free weights over the machines, but you need a healthy balance of both if you wanna be successful. And now for tip number seven, it's gonna to be to implement progressive overload. Progressive overload refers to the technique that involves incrementally increasing the weight for each working set. This principle states that increases in time, weight, or intensity should be kept within 10% or less each week to allow for gradual adaptation while minimizing the risk of injury. And this 10% is referring to one of the three variables I mentioned. I'm not telling you to increase 10% of all three at the same time. So if you're increasing 10% of the weight you performed, then that's enough for that week. This principle ensures that you will continue to challenge your muscles and keep on stimulating muscle growth going forward. And now jumping into tip number eight, we're gonna talk about optimizing your rest days. Rest days are overlooked by so many people, but it's super important when it comes to muscle development. If you neglect your rest days, you can cross the line into overtraining, which can have so many negative effects. According to UCLA Health, overtraining can result in imbalances in hormones such as cortisol, testosterone, and growth hormone. These imbalances can adversely affect metabolism and muscle growth. Symptoms of overtraining can include decreased performance and it negatively affects your mental health, causing symptoms like irritability, anxiety, depression, and poor sleep quality. A good rule of thumb is that you should aim to rest a muscle group 48 hours after training, but specifically for the legs, you should rest 72 hours as it's a larger muscle group. Keep this in mind when you're planning to make any training routine or regimen. Jumping into tip number nine, we need to improve our sleep. Just like rest days, sleep is heavily overlooked, especially when it comes to weight training. Sleep is the key to recovery. Your body produces hormones crucial for muscle growth and repair when you're asleep. This hormone helps rebuild damaged muscle tissue and it stimulates muscle hypertrophy. If you're not getting enough sleep, your muscles won't have the opportunity to fully recover. And this is ultimately gonna limit your growth. During the deepest stage of NREM sleep, the pituitary gland secretes about 70% of the human growth hormone it makes and this stimulates tissue growth and helps repair muscles from both exercise and normal daily wear and tear. It's recommended by the National Institute of Health that adults should sleep seven or more hours per night on a regular basis to promote optimal health. And I know this can be very difficult because life gets super busy, but I wanna go over a few strategies that you can implement to help improve your sleep. Three strategies that you can try and implement to improve your sleep hygiene include no electronic use one hour before bed, getting on a consistent sleep routine, and avoid all caffeine consumption after 4 p.m. at the latest. This is gonna put you on the right track to getting that seven hours of sleep that we all need. And now for the last tip of this video, tip number 10 is to track your progress. Tracking your gym progress can be a huge motivating factor. Just like anything, you're gonna have ups and downs and days where you feel like exercising and days when you don't. But when you look back on your before pictures and realize just how far you've come, the progress that you made can really fuel you to stay consistent and keep on pushing forward. Now to give you a quick bonus tip, the best thing you can do is choose only one of the tips that I covered in this video and stick with that. Don't try and implement all 10 because you'll quickly get disappointed and give up. Regardless of which one you choose, if you're consistent, you're gonna see huge progress. And what I recommend you do next is to check out this video here where I put all these principles into action and I go over the best science-based back workout you could possibly perform.